Uh, hello, we start uh, to our lecture number four. Our lecture about viral infections of skin, uh, herpes simplex, herpes zoster, viral warts, molluscum contagiosum, parasitic infections of skin, scabies, pediculosis, and cutaneous leishmaniosis. Part number one general description, a definition. Uh, viral dermatoses are the cutaneous disease resulting from one infection. And um, classification, uh, herpes virus group include uh, several diseases. Herpes simplex, varicella or chicken pox, herpes zoster, roseola infantum, kaposht. Uh, then, Fox virus group uh, belong malus, uh, con, uh, include con, uh, mal, malluscum contagiosum, milkers nodules, and warts uh, belong to human papilloma virus. And uh, paramyxovirus group, uh, missile, type 2. Type 1. Lesions appear on the lips and face. Type 2, this is genital herpes, transmitted by sexual transmitted diseases, and lesions uh, appear on the genital area and maybe on the extra genital area too, on the both area at the same place, at the same time. Lesions anyway may be caused by either antigenic type. And a transmission uh, can be uh, by intimate, in, intimate contact, direct inoculation through traumatized skin, and um, primary infection. Uh, it can be like primary infection and recurrent infection. So this is chronic process. Primary infections. Uh, this is first infection. After primary inoculation, vir virus migrates to the neuronal cells in um, ganglion, then uh, uh, gets to the latent infection, uh, then latent virus uh, to reactivate by uh, triggering, factor, uh, triggering factors, and uh, virus particles move on the nerve then replicate in the epithelial cells and a pure uh, recurrent infection. Uh, triggering factors like fever, trauma, emotional strength, menstruation, uh, um, maybe other chronic disease. Um, so uh, in uh, case of immune uh, Epidemiology, 75% uh, percent, of adults worldwide are uh, seropositive for uh, herpes simplex virus type 1. Seroprevalence for herpes simplex vi uh, virus type 2 is lower, appear at the age of onus of sexual activity. And incubative or subclinical infections, 90% uh, of all infected. Uh, pathogenesis, viral um, uh, replication in skin and mucous membranes, fo followed by replication and spread in neural tissue. Viral infection begins at the cutaneous portal of entry as the oral cavity, genital mucosa, ocular, ocular connectiva, or breaks in uh, keratinocyte epithelium. Uh, virus replicates locally, resulting in the death of the cell and sometimes produce clinically appearing inflammatory responses as the characteristic herpetic vessels and ulcers. Uh, virus also enters nerve endings and spreads beyond the portal of, of sensory ganglia bar, uh, by intraneuronal transfer. Virus replicates in some sensory neurons and go back to the uh, territory where they are released from nerve endings and replicate uh, in the skin, uh, further on the skin or mucosal surfaces. 
and most uh, these infections in some infected neurons the infection is latent and uh, recurrent infections may be symptomatic, a uh, virus is shed at the site and can be transmitted uh, to susceptible individuals. Uh, so, on this picture, we can see uh, the clinical manifestations of uh, herpes simplex type 1 on the face. Um, then, um, uh, features of the lesions, that is multiple small papules or vesicles even, um, clustered together. Uh, grouped vesicles or uh, pustules or, uh, or the erythematose, edematose base. Um, this, uh, we can see this picture on the face uh, and uh, it can be in, in uh, very often around lips, mouth, neck, on the genital area and heal within uh, one to Clinical manifestations, um, this is a primary herpes simplex infections, um, may be in different um, uh, localization. Uh, primary herpes uh, gingivostomatitic, uh, primary herpes genitalis, primary herpes white low, and primary herpes keratoconnectivities. Kerat and disseminated herpes simplex in newborn. And on this picture, we can see herpes labialis. Uh, herpes labialis, um, it is the, uh, in, in, in this picture, we can see that the same herpes labialis. Yes, and uh, fever, blister, or cold sores are not the most common manifestation of recurrent uh, HSV uh, infection. One, lesions sometimes occur in the nose, chin, chest, oral mucosa, uh, occur burning, tingling, itching, mm, uh, or pain uh, before the development of the herpes lesion. Uh, so, for example, at night, uh, in the evening, uh, if you're pain, uh, but uh, in the morning, uh, we can uh, see the clinical manifestations on the same place. Complete healing can go. Uh, herpes keratoconnectivitis, uh, we on this picture. The connectivities uh, usually unilateral and often associated with blepharitis and tender inferior esophageal lymphadenopathy. Uh, patient may uh, fever, um, then uh, involve the conjunctiva, cornea, or retina, and uh, may be primary or recurring. Uh, then uh, um, it is retinal infection are uh, rare and are more likely among infants uh, with neonatal herpes and immunocompromised person with disseminated uh, HSV infection. Here we can see the herpes keratoconnectivitis too. Uh, patient, patient may have, have fever and um, may re, uh, repeated appearance can cause progressive um, corneal scarring and injure them can lead to uh, bleed, blood. Uh, this is um, uh, herpes 2. We can see. Herpes white low is seen most frequently in health personnel confronting oral mucosa, and there are grouped vesicles on, on the entrance area as in other herpes type. Uh, the same. And uh, diagnosis based on the clinical diagnosis and laboratory test. Laboratory test includes sunk test 
or tan smear, take a smear of cells from the base of the skin lesions and then uh, spread the cells on a glass slide and uh, then we uh, stain uh, with right or ginger stain and look for um, multinucleated uh, young cells. Young cells. Uh, cells. Um, detection of virus antigen of the lesion, materials, uh, vesicular fluid, cells from the base of the skin lesion, and methods, direct fluorescent antibody test um, and um, virus culture and PCR polymerase chain reaction too. Uh, serologic tests um, are generally not used in determining uh, whether, uh, whether a skin lesion is due to HSV infection. A positive result to a serological test indicates only that the individual is infected with that virus, not that the viral infection is the cause of the current lesion. And um, uh, uh, treatment, uh, it depends on the uh, acute period or uh, re um, re um, remission period. Primary infection, we, uh, in, in case of primary infection, in any case, we use antiviral therapy, and it is uh, aciclavir, valaciclavir, famciclavir, and um, in case of recurring uh, period, uh, treatment duration five days with the same uh, anti uh, medicine. Severe recurrent cases, this is uh, the severe process case and other antiviral agent may be applied to topical therapy. Herpes simplex virus or HSV infects a person, there are no symptoms. In fact, it also usually moves from one person to another in the absence of symptoms. So therefore it can move through a population silently. Once in a while, though, it can cause symptoms, and typically those are in the form of skin and mucous membrane lesions, which can be divided into infections above the waist, mostly involving the mouth and the tongue, and those below the waist, involving the genitals. There are two types of herpes simplex viruses, HSV1 and HSV2, both of which are part of a larger family of enveloped, double-stranded DNA viruses, the herpes viridae family, Generally speaking, HSV1 tends to cause infections above the waist, and HSV2 tends to cause infections below the waist. But there's a lot of crossover because both viruses can cause both types of infections. Although herpes is most contagious when there are virus-filled lesions present, it can also spread by asymptomatic shedding, which means that herpes viruses can be in the saliva or genital secretions even when there are no signs of a cold sore or genital lesion. Typically, when herpes virus lands on a new host, in other words, a person who's never had herpes before, it dives into small cracks in the skin, or mucosa, and binds to epithelial cell receptors, which triggers those cells to internalize the virus. Once inside, the virus starts up the lytic cycle, which is where its DNA gets transcribed and translated by cellular enzymes, which help to form viral proteins, which are packaged into new herpes viruses, which can leave to go off and infect neighboring epithelial cells. HSV1 and HSV2 also infect nearby sensory neurons and travel up their axon to the neuron's cell body to start up the latent cycle. The sensory neurons of the face have their cell bodies in the trigeminal ganglia, and those around the genitalia are located in the sacral ganglia. So that's ultimately where the herpes virus settles in, for life. You see, those sensory neurons aren't destroyed. Instead, they become a permanent home for the herpes virus. And from time to time, the herpes virus makes a few viral copies of itself and sends those virus particles back down the axon so they can get released and infect epithelial cells. Since the trigeminal and sacral ganglia serve just one side of the face or body, 
Herpes vesicles and ulcers develop on the ipsilateral, or same side, as the affected ganglia. This can happen over and over again throughout a person's lifetime, with classic triggers being things like stress, skin damage, and viral illnesses. Recurrent episodes are usually less severe than the primary infection, and sometimes there are no symptoms at all. When there are symptoms, there might be characteristic tingling or burning sensation, called a prodrome, one or two days before the blisters appear. In oral and genital herpes, the primary infection is most often asymptomatic. Having said that, in oral herpes, when it does cause symptoms, it usually affects children and it causes lesions on the palate, gums, tongue, lip, and facial area, as well as a fever and enlarged lymph nodes. The lesions themselves are typically clusters of small, painful, fluid-filled blisters that ooze and ulcerate, and then eventually heal after a few weeks. In older children and adults, a common symptom is pharyngitis. Most of the time, like primary infection, reactivation doesn't cause any symptoms. But when it does, the most common pattern is having a handful of blisters at the vermilion border, the border of the lip, on one side of the face. These blisters are smaller and typically heal over a week's time. With genital herpes, primary infection can cause symptoms like ulcers and pustules, which form on the labia majora, labia minora, mons pubis, vaginal mucosa, and cervix in women, and on the shaft of the penis in men. Like oral herpes, most of the time reactivation doesn't cause any symptoms. But when it does, the most common pattern is to have a few blisters that resolve rapidly in about a week. In addition to oral and genital infections, HSV can also affect other areas. When it affects the fingertip or nail bed, it's called herpetic whitlow, and this might happen if the finger rubs up against an active lesion around the mouth or genital area. Once it affects the fingertip, it's also easy for it to get carried over to other areas in the body to spread the infection, a process called auto-inoculation. HSV can sometimes involve the trunk, extremities, or head, a pattern that's common among wrestlers because they have a lot of skin-to-skin -skin contact and is therefore called herpes gladiatorum. Finally, individuals with burn injuries or with atopic dermatitis can have really serious herpes infections in those areas. The latter even has a specific name, eczema herpeticum. HSV can also affect the eye, causing keratoconjunctivitis, which is inflammation of both the cornea and the conjunctiva. In addition to the symptoms of conjunctivitis, which are pain, redness, tearing, and sensitivity to light, there can be some classic signs of corneal involvement, like blurry vision and a branching dendritic lesion, which looks a bit like the tree-like dendrites of a neuron, which happens on the cornea itself, and this pattern is classic for herpes infection. In rare cases, herpes viruses can spread to the central nervous system and cause meningitis or encephalitis, typically affecting the temporal lobe in individuals of all ages. These can happen from a primary infection, but more commonly happen during reactivation when some of the virus can escape into the bloodstream and reach the brain. When there is brain involvement, a lumbar puncture often has specific findings like an increase in red blood cells, increase in white blood cells, and elevated protein levels. There are also some CT, MRI, and EEG changes that can help to make a diagnosis. HSV can also pass from a mother to a baby. Rather than causing a congenital infection while the fetus is in the uterus, most of the transmission happens at birth when the baby passes through the infected maternal vaginal secretions during delivery. Neonatal HSV causes three different patterns of illness, each happening about one-third of the time. The first is skin, eye, or mucous membrane infection, where lesions pop up one to two weeks after delivery, typically at sites of damaged skin like the site where fetal scalp electrodes might have been attached. The second is central nervous system infection, which typically causes lethargy, irritability, and even seizures two to three weeks after delivery, and can cause some of the same lumbar puncture 
CT, MRI, and EEG findings as that in older children and adults with HSV encephalitis. If not treated, both the first and second type can transition into the third type, which is disseminated infection, where herpes virus causes sepsis and failure of various organs, including the heart and the brain. HSV can cause unique symptoms in immunocompromised individuals, who tend to have more frequent reactivation, more severe symptoms, and a wider range of symptoms, like lesions in the esophagus or lungs. Herpes can usually be diagnosed based on how the skin or mucous membrane lesions look, and can be confirmed with tests looking for viral DNA, like polymerase chain reaction, an antibody response to the virus, or by growing the virus with a viral culture. Although infections typically resolve without treatment within a couple of weeks, there are antiviral drugs like acyclovir, famcyclovir, and valacyclovir that can be used topically or systemically to reduce pain and speed up healing. For recurring episodes, these treatments usually work best if taken when the prodrome starts, in other words, before the blisters develop, and high-dose intravenous antivirals might be given in more severe or life-threatening situations. All right, as a quick recap, most of the time, herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 cause asymptomatic latent infections that set up in the trigeminal and sacral ganglia for life. But sometimes they can cause symptoms like recurrent oral and genital lesions. They can also cause more severe infections like HSV keratoconjunctivitis, meningitis, and encephalitis, as well as neonatal infections which usually get transmitted when a baby passes through infected vaginal secretions. Thanks. Uh, we can see herpes um, uh, zoster. Herpes zoster is in the second disease, belongs to viral infections. Um, this virus is called the varicella zoster virus and uh, belongs to the herpes virus. Uh, the other name is shingles. Uh, shingles or herpes zoster is caused by almost the same virus that causes chickenpox. On this picture, we can see the clinical picture of chickenpox. In about one out uh, of five people previously infected with chickenpox, the virus wakes up or reactivates, often many years or decades after a childhood chickenpox infection. When the virus is reactivated, it then causes shingles or chickenpox rash begins as small discrete red dots separated up, uh, apart on the face, scalp, torso and upper arms and legs, progressing over 10-12 hours to small bumps, blisters or pustules, followed by amplification and the formation of rust. Here we can see vesicles uh, in case of uh, same disease. This is herpes um, zoster on genitalia. Uh, we can see the shingles, also known as herpes zoster, is not related to the sexual transmitted herpes virus disease called herpes genitalis or the oral herpes virus, herpes simplex. So this is different uh, process, this is different disease. Uh, shingles uh, zoster, uh, herpes zoster or shingles, also uh, called or zona, gets its name from both the Latin and French words for belt or ghetto um, and refers to girdle-like skin eruptions that may occur on the trunk of the body, like belt, uh, and that's why um, the name take from uh, Latin belt or uh, herpes zoster uh, occurs unilaterally within the distribution of a cranial or spinal sensory nerve. Skin lesions like papules, plaques of erythema blisters in the um, uh, dermatome, 
uh, and it is very important pain associated with therapy software. It is a really painful disease and uh, distinguished from the herpes simplex only by uh, very severe pain. Disease duration two, three weeks in the younger and six weeks or more in the elder. Here we can see the process, herpes zoster process uh, on the trunk. And uh, before a rash is visible, the patient may notice several days, several days to a week of burning pain and sensitive skin. When the characteristic, uh, characteristic rash is not yet apparent, it may be difficult to de determine the cause of the often severe pain. Here we can see the same uh, blisters, vesicles, and um, uh, it is really painful disease. Uh, the blisters follow the path of individual nerves that come out of the spinal cord in a specific ray-like distribution and appear uh, in a band-like pattern on an ear. Here we can see groups of physicals and uh, localized by anatomic structure of nerve. It is a very characteristic um, and main uh, clinical manifestation. In many cases, we diagnose this disease only by clinical picture, because clinical picture is enough uh, character for this. Herpes style, herpes zoster style. This is on the face, and in many cases um, uh, uh, involve in process just one nerve, and in a rare involve several. Generally, only one nerve level is involved. In a rare case, a case more than one nerve will be involved. The entire path of the affected nerve may be involved or there may be areas in the distribution of the nerve with blisters and areas without blisters. Eventually the blisters pop and the area starts to ooze. The affected area will be then crossed over and yeah, the same picture. Duration of the outbreak may take three or four weeks from start to finish. On occasion, the pain will be present, but the blisters may never, never appear. This can be a very confusing pain. Herpes zoster is contagious and can be spread from an affected person to babies, children, or adults who have not had chicken pox. But instead of developing shingles, these people develop similar to chicken pox. The time prior to um, healing or crossing of the blisters is the contagious stage of shingles. When all of the blisters are crusted over, the virus can no longer be spread and the contagious period the clinical appearance of shingles with characteristic painful blisters localized to the region of a specific nerve is usually sufficient or to establish the diagnosis. No diagnostic tests are required. However, particularly in people with impaired immune fu function, shingles may sometimes not display the characteristic clinical pattern. In these cases, uh, samples from the affected area may be tested in a laboratory, either by culturing the tissue, or the tissue for growth of the virus, or by identifying the genetic material of the virus. Generally, shingles heals well, and pro problems are few. However, on occasion, the blisters can become infected with bacteria, causing cellulitis, a bacterial infection of the skin. 
Is this a cure? The area will become reddened, warm, firm, and tender. You might notice red streaks forming around the wound, uh, and antibiotics can be used to treat these complications. A more worrisome complications occur when shingles affect the face, specifically the forehead and nose. In this situation, it is possible, also not likely, that shingles can affect the eye, leading to vision blindness appear. Herpes zoster ophthalmicus. A rare complication of shingles is known as Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. In this case, the cranial nerves are involved. Symptoms may include peripheral facial nerve weakness and deafness. The typical rash is often observed around the ear canal. Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, complications of zoster. Diagnosis. Uh, in the early stage of herpes zoster, uh, if the number of lesions of zoster is limited, uh, it can be relatively, um, relatively uh, um, indistinguishable from herpes simplex. Herpes zoster, more painful, progress to involve more area over treatment antiviral therapy, uh, you know, aciclavir, topical therapy, general ter therapy, and depend on the uh, primary period or recurring period, this stem. Varicella zoster virus is one of the herpes viruses, and it causes two diseases. Varicella, or chickenpox, and herpes zoster, also known as shingles. Zoster actually refers to a type of belt used by ancient Greek warriors because of the belt-like appearance of shingles. Now, let's first talk a bit about the nervous system. It consists of two parts. The central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system includes the nerves that fan out from the central nervous system to reach the skin, muscles, and organs. Peripheral nerves that originate from the brain are called cranial nerves, and they're in charge of motor and sensory innervation of the head and neck. A specific cranial nerve, cranial nerve 5, is the trigeminal nerve, and it's responsible for the sensation in the face. Its sensory neurons create a nerve cell cluster called trigeminal ganglion, located in the bones on the side of the face between the eyes and ears. The peripheral nerves originating from the spinal cord are called spinal nerves. Each nerve is formed by a dorsal and a ventral root. Ventral roots contain neurons that carry motor innervation from the spinal cord to the muscles. Sensory information like touch, temperature, pain, and pressure from the skin and other tissues travel through first order sensory neurons in the dorsal root ganglion near the spinal cord, then through the dorsal root and into the spinal cord where it synapses with the second order neurons. Now each spinal nerve is in charge of the sensation of a specific area of the skin called a dermatome. For example, if you step on a Lego, the pain would be carried by the S1 nerve, but if you hit your big toe on a table leg, the pain would be carried by the L5 nerve. Varicella zoster virus is a double-stranded DNA virus protected by a protein coat called a capsid, which is enveloped by a lipid membrane. The virus initially enters respiratory epithelial cells, but eventually spreads to numerous cell types. It gets into all of these cells by fusing its membrane with the cell membrane and releasing the capsid inside the cell. The capsid binds to the nucleus and injects it with viral DNA, where it's copied. The viral genes are transcribed into RNA and go over to the ribosome where they are translated into capsid proteins. The capsid and viral DNA fuse together. They go through the Golgi complex, a cell organelle in charge of packing proteins, to get their lipid membrane, and finally the newly formed viruses leave the cell, leaving behind a dead cell. 
When an infected person sneezes or coughs, the viruses leave the lungs and get released into the air. The virus can also be transmitted through contact with the oral or skin lesions of the infected person. When the virus comes into contact with the respiratory mucosa or the skin of a new person, it starts replicating in the epithelial cells. It soon gets picked up by nearby immune cells and gets transported to a nearby lymph node. The virus now causes primary infection called varicella, or chickenpox, and it has two stages, primary viremia and secondary viremia. In primary viremia, the virus infects a part of the immune system in the liver and spleen called the reticuloendothelial system, which is made up of phagocytic cells. About two weeks after entering the body, the virus starts infecting immune cells themselves, specifically T cells, and that is considered the secondary viremia. Infected T cells start expressing proteins that bind to receptors on the skin cells. It's a bit like the virus hitching a ride in the T cell to get to the skin. Once the T cells reach the skin, they release the viruses, which start infecting keratinocytes. The infection spreads through the skin, going directly from cell to cell. Sometimes the infected keratinocytes start to fuse together and create giant multinucleated cells called Zank cells. Uninfected cells start secreting interferons alpha and beta, which inhibits viral protein synthesis and protects those cells from getting infected. As a result, we get tiny lesions on the skin separated by normal areas of skin. In addition to infecting keratinocytes, the virus also infects sensory neurons in the skin, and in those neurons it travels retrogradely, meaning backward through the neuron to the dorsal root ganglia, or, if it's on the face, the trigeminal ganglia. Over time, when the adaptive immune reaction kicks in, most of the viruses in the body are eliminated but the ones in the ganglions are spared and can remain dormant for many years. Most commonly, the virus establishes a latent state within the trigeminal ganglia and the dorsal ganglia. Later on, if the immune system weakens due to aging, stress, or immunosuppressive therapy, the virus can be reactivated. It can then travel back up through the sensory nerve, anterogradely, to the skin and cause an infection in the innervated dermatome. That's called herpes zoster, or shingles. With both chickenpox and shingles, the most common complication is a secondary bacterial infection of the skin lesions. So, if the liver becomes infected, hepatitis can occur. If the virus spreads to the lungs, we get pneumonia. If the brain or its protective membrane, called the meninges, become infected, encephalomeningitis could occur. Symptoms of chickenpox begin about two weeks after it enters the body. The infection usually causes a fever, headache, and overall weakness. After a couple of days, skin lesions start to appear on the scalp, face, and trunk. At first, there are flat, red, itchy spots called macules. Over time, they become elevated and develop into papules, and then into small, fluid-filled vesicles. Within one to two days, the vesicles begin to crust over and form scabs. After about five days, the scabs fall off, usually without leaving a scar. New crops of lesions are continuously forming in different places on the body every three to five days, so it's possible to see lesions in different phases at the same time. In addition to the itchy lesions, painful sores can appear on mucosal surfaces like inside the mouth. In shingles, there's typically pain, itching, or tingling in the area where the rash will develop. The rash itself is usually in a single stripe of vesicles around either the left or the right side of the body, or on one side of the face. It usually takes four weeks for the rash to disappear, but there can be pain in the affected dermatome which lasts for more than 90 days, called postherpetic neuralgia. Chickenpox and shingles are usually diagnosed based on the way that the skin lesions appear, but the diagnosis can be confirmed by using the Zank test to look for multinucleated giant cells in the fluid of the vesicles. More commonly, blood tests for varicella zoster antibodies, or PCR, can be done to look for viral DNA. Chickenpox treatment mainly includes the use of topical antipyretic medications to help reduce the itching. Also, analgesics and anti-inflammatory medications can help reduce the fever, but aspirin should not be used in someone with chickenpox because it can trigger Ray syndrome. In Ray syndrome, the liver gets affected by both varicella zoster virus and aspirin, 
and it leads to a buildup of ammonia in the body. In immunocompromised individuals, antivirals like acyclovir, famcyclovir, and valacyclovir can be used. In some situations, varicella zoster immune globulin, or VZIG, which are antivaricella antibodies, can be given to treat immunocompromised or pregnant individuals. Finally, varicella vaccine can be used to prevent chickenpox by helping the body mount protective immunity against a weakened form of the virus. Similarly, zoster vaccine can be used to reduce zoster, which is more common in adults. All right, as a quick recap, varicella zoster virus is a herpes virus that causes primary infection in the lymph nodes and secondary infection in the keratinocytes and neurons in the skin. From the neurons in the skin, it travels retrogradely to the nerve ganglia, where it remains dormant. Chickenpox is characterized by a rash on the scalp, face, and trunk that contains macules, papules, vesicles, and scabs at the same time. Herpes zoster, or shingles, is caused by the reactivation of the virus with vesicles located along one dermatome. Treatment is usually symptomatic and in some cases includes antiviral drugs. And uh, majuscum contagiosum. Uh, majuscum contagiosum is caused by fox virus, um, and um, it is uh, has no non-human animal reservoir for this majuscum contagiosum virus. Uh, it is really contagious, very contagious, and the virus is spread by skin-to-skin -skin contact with a person who has malusum or by touching a lesion on your own body and transferring the virus to another location on your body, out inoculation. And then it is also possible to get malusum by sharing towels or clothing with other people who have malusum. Um, it's, uh, it spreads easily with out inoculation uh, and central dimple is an important diagnostic clue. If it's squeezed with a pair of forceps, a white grazy mass is exuded. Here we can see uh, the uh, dimple, central dimple. It is a uh, main clinical symptom. And uh, here, the time from infection, it is, um, incubation period may last from one week to six months. Here, uh, we can see these uh, papules of malusum contagiosum. And lesion begins as small papules that are smooth, flesh colored, dumped, uh, colored, dumped with a central dimple. Inside the papule is a white short light cord and can be easily expressed. Lesions can occur anywhere on the skin and mucous membranes, but are usually grouped in one or two areas. Occasionally, they may be widely disseminated. Typically, fever that 20 lesions are present, but some individuals may have hundreds. The head, eyelids, trunk, genitalia most common affected. The genitalia being the uh, predominant site in adults. The lesions are characteristically asymptomatic, but a few patients may complain of itching or may develop an uh, eczematose reaction around the lesions. Malluscum contagiosum lesions are flesh colored, dumb shaped and curly in appearance. They are often 1-5 mm in diameter with a dimpled center. They are generally not painful, but they may itch or become irritated, and uh, picking or scratching the bands may lead to uh, further a huge infection or, sca or scarring. In about 10% of cases, uh, exam, um, exam and develops around the lesions. They may occasionally be completed by secondary bacterial infection. Here we can see the central dimple. Among these contagiosum look like um, 
or oral invasive membrane can involve in process. Not uh, mucus, just lips. In process, genital area, uh, this disease can be transmitted, can be transmitted with uh, such a uh, sexual contact. Diagnosis is made on clinical experience, and the virus can uh, routinely be cultured. The diagnosis can be confirmed by excisional biopsy. And histologically, molluscum convigulosum is characterized by molluscum bodies in the epidermis above the stratum basale, which consists of large cells with abundant granular eosinophilic cytoplasm and a small periphery. Treatment. There are uh, many treatment options and it depends. And uh, we often use uh, uh, page is an uh, efficient method in treatment. The dermatologist may use a small tool called a uh, to scrape the, uh, scrap the bumps from the skin uh, and if lesions is uh, curated and uh, iodine solution is applied. Then we, use, uh, we can use electrocarbulation and cryosurgery. Uh, the dermatologist freezes uh, the bumps with a uh, liquid. In this, uh, this picture we can see the process. Uh, curatage process uh, when dermatologists mm, uh, take from the bumps uh, uh, inside. Laser surgery we use two. Um, treatment. Treatment um, we use. Uh, AIDS patient, uh, in the AIDS patient, and molluscum contagiosum remains contagious until all of the bumps go away. If, per, if a person with a healthy immune system opts not to treat the bumps, the bumps will eventually go away on their own without leaving a scar. After treatment, a person may get new bumps for as long as six months. Most people have complete clearing in two.